Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Let's kick this video off with something not too surprising. AMD was sandbagging when it came to the performance targets of Zen 4 with some caveats. Let's discuss this because it gets a little complicated. As I'm sure most of you are aware by now, AMD did demo the chip at Computex. And we saw, of course, a engineering sample processor hit 5.5 gigahertz. And AMD at the time stated that they're looking at around a 15% increase in performance single thread. But this was just total performance, it wasn't IPC, so this of course meant it was inclusive of clock frequency. There's a very interesting interview actually that's just popped up on Tech Power Up. I'll leave a link in the video description. The big first question is 16 cores, 32 threads, which is at launch. Now, that's interesting. That does leave the window open for higher core counts in the future, but I think Zen 4 will probably stick with 16 cores. I had heard possibly they may increase the core count for Zen 4, but personally, I don't think they will. My guess is that they're going to launch the Vcache processors, uh, which is going to be next year. In fact, Robert, in the same interview, even basically hints that this is going to be the case. And in my personal opinion, it's probably going to be used as something that AMD can counter Intel's next generation of processors. But rather interestingly, a question was asked, well, you showed a 15% single thread performance increase over the 5950X, which meant the gaming performance would be roughly on par with 5800X3D, which of course is the 5800 based on the Zen 3 architecture, albeit with the 3D vCache. Robert said, I think it's actually too early to say. We were deliberately conservative on our number and single thread performance. We do intend to publish the exact breakdown of IPC versus frequency later this summer, which also includes power, area, and performance on the new process. But as for how it stacks up against what, I think it's too early to say, as we're still bringing up the silicon. I guess what AMD are basically doing here is being, well pretty much conservative, not over-promising, and then under-delivering, which I do think is a good option. Now, curiously, though, there was also another interview that went on. So perhaps one of the more interesting things is from a second interview, and this is via Hot Hardware. Now, the interview is about an hour long, and I would actually encourage you guys to check out the entire video. But again, Robert Halleck was answering questions, and one of the things he stated was that, yes, 16 cores is the maximum for AM5 launch, again, implying that the core count later on will increase. Although, I, I personally think this is going to be Zen 5, as I've said many times at this stage. But anyway, he also adds that we're getting 40% performance increase with that. I'll leave a link to the thread from Kepler underscore L2. It's a lot of discussion, actually, as to how they're getting these performance numbers, 40%. Now, it does seem that this is in reference to multi-thread, not single thread. But there's an asterisk here, which is the size of, like, a planet. And I don't mean, like, Pluto either. I mean, like, a planet like a hundred times the size of Earth. Well, that's not realistic, but you get the idea. It's massive. And that is that uh, they're not actually specifying what application is achieving that performance target. So, for example, are we looking at a game like Deathloop, which is, you know, lightly multi-threaded, and that's kind of an average gaming performance number. Or are we looking at something like Adobe Premiere or 3D Studio Max or Blender or whatever? Or instead, are we looking at an application which is heavily optimized utilizing something like AVX 512? We just don't know. Remember, there are a plethora of changes with um, Zen 4, and one of the big ones is, of course, the inclusion of AVX 512 support, which is something that Zen 3 just doesn't have. So naturally, if an, if an application is using that, well, performance, I'm going to shock you here, is going to be faster. So it doesn't really provide us a whole huge amount of context. But there were a couple of other nuggets in these interviews as well. Perhaps one of the big ones is that they said that the 5.5 gigahertz frequency that was achieved in um, Deathloop was actually pretty easy for them to hit. Now, I've personally mentioned a few times on the channel that, and also on Twitter that I heard like 5.7 gigahertz was, a, was actually being hit in lightly threaded applications. Uh, I believe I said that like on Thursday or Friday, actually. But I've since then 
heard even 5.8 was achieved. Now, this is just samples within a lab, and unfortunately, we don't exactly know how any of this was achieved. Is it dry ice? Is it liquid nitrogen? Is it utilizing a similar AIO situation to the Computex demos? Um, it will be very interesting to see what hardcore overclockers, you know, the, those that set records, are able to hit here. And um, there was also some hints with Robert um, that the cache layout for the chip has changed. Um, I do think that this was kind of some rumors that were floating around back in the day. Um, I'd actually heard that there were some major changes to the Elm 1 cache. And then I think also that this was like hinted with the Gigabyte leak as well. I think also Chips and Cheese mentioned this. Um, but to be honest with you, I didn't really look too much at the Gigabyte leak other than uh, some of the big headlines that were kind of doing the rounds because, yeah, I just didn't want to download that and like get spanked legally for obvious reasons. But what I will say is that AMD are being very, very, very cagey with all the details for Zen 4. And of course, it does make sense. Again, I think under, um, I think, you know, over promising and then under delivering is like the worst thing you can possibly do as a company it's better to do the reverse of that and then people become surprised and happy with whatever product and it's going to be very curious for me also how well these processes scale with clock frequency of the memory and furthermore of course things like memory timings i'm going to be also interested to see what AMD does for the pricing of these processors because ultimately if you go with a six core processor and the DDR5 memory is pretty expensive it's going to make entry level Zen 4 kind of uh, difficult for budget gamers so you know on a budget anyway you're probably going to still want to stick to Zen 3 for a while AMD have basically said in public that Zen 3 and AM4 are not going anywhere for the shorter to medium term and I do think this is a good option it does, however, give Intel an in um, in terms of core count and configuration because obviously they've got the big little architecture so they can tweak things as necessary. I'm guessing Intel are going to apply a ton of pressure on the likes of the i3s and i5s um, since they've got DDR4 and DDR5 support. If Intel have some sense, they will also release more unlocked SKUs in those, in those ranges as well, but who knows. And the final thing I'd like to just bring up real quick for today is that the RTX 40 and 90 is going to be the GPU which launches first. Basically, Cup 7 Kimmy has confirmed that we're going to see choose B, so 4090, then 80, then 70 launches. We don't actually know, however, what the time difference is between them. Now, ultimately, this could mean that there's like a three day launch difference between, let's say, the 4090 and 4070. Or it could be something more like a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I personally don't think that NVIDIA are going to want to have like a huge gap. Let's say three months between the launch of the 4090 and the 4080. It just doesn't seem particularly likely to me. I'll confess I'm perhaps actually more hyped with this generation of graphics cards than what I am with any others in recent memories and that includes like rdna2 rtx20 even and so on because i think we're going to see such a large performance leap that even if let's say the 4090 is only two times faster only than the 3090 assuming it's not ridiculous in pricing i think that's going to be pretty awesome and i really do hope that this trickles down to lower end cards as well because the equivalent of like let's say a 4060 or a 4070 which is capable of like destroying uh, 4k games is just absolutely it's just really tantalizing anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you did leave a likey on the video uh, hopefully tomorrow there will be an exclusive concerning the playstation 5 pro and some other bits and pieces which is what i've predominantly been working on today so yeah hopefully you'll join me there i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now